You false prophet. You ought to be run out of town. Peddling your religion on the street like a common hawker. Russellite. You're against all religions. A homewrecker. Breaking up families. You'll not get away with it. You're hated all over the world. You antichrist. Sheep stealer. Blasphemer. Denying the divinity of Christ. Could I ask you something, Clifton? Sure, Bart. What is it? I've been thinking about the opposition we get as Jehovah's Witnesses. It seems to continue so uninterruptedly. I know we have to be tested, but some of our brothers in some countries have endured persecution for so many years. And others have suffered illnesses and infirmities. And think of the trials from unbelieving maids and criticism from fellow workers and neighbors. Yet they keep on enduring. It's true, Bart. And it was all foretold. But has something come up that has... Something serious, really. Oh, I was in the street work this afternoon, and just as a woman was getting ready to take the magazines, some fellow came along and started calling me a lot of names. It scared her off. She left without the magazines. Oh, that's too bad. Yes. And I got to thinking... How often these trials come in such a way that little or no defense is possible, and appearances to an uninformed observer could make us look very bad. I've often thought of that too, Bart, and it can be a bit disturbing, can't it? But you know, did you ever think how much like Job's trials the experiences of Jehovah's people in modern times have been? Job was a just and honest man whose eyes and ears were always open to the needs of the lowly ones, and his good deeds were many. But when his trials came, when he was stripped of all his belongings, even his family, and was stricken with a loathsome and deadly disease, it looked to those observing as if Jehovah must be punishing him for some secret and dreadful sin. And they all mocked him and turned against him. Yet all the while he was completely innocent, hated indeed by his former associates, but beloved of God. It was because of Satan's challenge, wasn't it? Yes. When Jehovah reminded Satan that there was no one like Job in the earth, a man blameless and upright, fearing God and turning aside from bad, Satan hurled back his defiant challenge in Jehovah's face. Is it for nothing that Job has feared God? Have not you yourself put up a hedge about him and about his house and about everything that he has all around? The work of his hands you have blessed and his livestock itself has spread abroad in the earth. But for a change, thrust out your hand, please, and touch everything he has and see whether he will not curse you to your very face. And that's when the issue of Job's integrity began. Yes, and it had to be carried through to the finish. Jehovah told Satan, Look, everything that he has is in your hand. Only against him himself do you not thrust out your hand. Later, of course, Jehovah allowed Satan to attack the very person of Job. The only restriction being he could not take his life. What a brutal, vicious, and wicked attack this archenemy of Jehovah made upon this good, kind, and faithful servant of Jehovah, one of whom Jehovah himself had testified as being a man blameless and upright, fearing God and turning aside from bad. Bring in the water, slave. <laughs> Need more wood for the fire, slave. Move along now. I'm not your slave, and I'll not carry any water oh, yes, for you. you will You'll too. be carrying it for someone soon enough. <laughs> be gone, you good-for-nothing sons of a nameless one. You'll be the nameless one. And uh, without an inheritance, too. You don't have any land anymore. That still has to be settled. Oh. Step aside now. Ah. 
Michelle, did you see Jockton moving your boundary markers? No. Then how can you accuse an elder of the city like this? Is it Jockton whom you claim has your bull? Yes, my lord, and we can't cultivate our land. She owes me a large sum of money and can't repay it. How can I, my lord, without my bull to cultivate our land? Do you owe Jockton a sum of money? Yes. I would like to repay it, but how can I? There's nothing we can do, Mashala. Jockton is entitled to security. But, my lord, surely there's something you can do. There's Joe. I wonder if he knows anything about this matter. I'm sure he'll see that justice. Oh, my lord, Joe, thank the true God that you've come. Please, my lord, hear my case and see that justice is done. We've heard her case, Job, and the matter is settled. Settled? This woman has laid charges without evidence or witnesses. A very serious charge. One without basis, so that we have dismissed her case. My Lord Job, the elders gave me no opportunity. Did you hear this woman's witnesses to her charge? She spoke of no witnesses. I had no opportunity. What is your name, my daughter? And what is the problem you would have cleared up? My name is Mishala, and this is my son Gomar, a fatherless boy. Jockton moved back my boundary markers and denies me the right to cultivate our land, which is my son's inheritance. Besides that, he has seized my bull so that I cannot cultivate the land even if I can get it back. Well, Michelle knows... Why do you say Jockton moved your boundary markers? Did you see him? No, my lord, but these two women, my neighbors, saw him. Come here, my daughters. Is it true that you saw Jockton move the boundary markers on the land of this widow's son? Yes, my lord, but we thought nothing of it at the time. We knew Michelle was poor and thought she had sold the land to Jockton until she told us she had not. Jockton, did you move back her boundary markers? Yes. I see. And how did you acquire the land? Did you buy it from this widow? She owes me a large sum of money, a long overdue, so the property is rightfully mine by her default. But he has my bull also, which he took as security, and left me with no means to cultivate the land so I could repay him. Are you aware of this transaction between Jockton and the widow? Of the loan, the bull is security, and the moving of the boundary markers? No, no, my lord. Nothing has been said to us until today. We're completely ignorant of the entire matter. Is it true, Mashala, that uh, you owe Jockton a large sum of money? Yes, my lord. My husband was ill for some months before he died, and our crops failed completely. The money was needed until we could sow our field and reap its fruitage. Jockton, if this loan were repaid, would you have any claim against the widow's property? Um, no. Or any reason for keeping her bull as a security? No, but, uh, uh Joe Daz. Yes, my lord. Pay Jockton the sum of money owing him. Take it from my own funds. And write out a record of the amount to be repaid to me by Michelle whenever the true God blesses her with the means to do it. No other time limit is to be imposed, and no usury is to be exacted or any security taken for the loan. Just it shall be done, my lord. You are witnesses of this transaction. Uh, we are witnesses. Yes, we are witnesses. 
Jockton. In view of the decision of the elders, as witnesses of the repayment of your loan, you are to restore the boundary markers of the widow's land and return to her the bull that is hers, so that she and her son can cultivate the land that is his inheritance. You are witnesses of this agreement. We stand as witnesses. Jodas. I would have you see the preparing of burnt sacrifices according to the number of my seven sons and their three sisters. Their banquet days have gone round the circuit of their houses according to their custom and have come now to the house of the eldest to complete the circuit. So I would send and sanctify them and offer up a burnt sacrifice in behalf of each. For maybe my sons have sinned in some way and thought bad things against God in their heart. As you say, my lord, this is the way that you do always. Is there anything more, my lord? Yes, Jodez. Take these clay tablets, please, and see that they're baked thoroughly in the sun. Then uh, store them with all the other records of contracts. I'll see that it's done at once, my lord. And uh, let me know when the sacrifices have been prepared. Very well, my lord. You're a very generous man, Job. Hmm. But, Job... Yes? Being so generous with everyone... Tamara, my good wife, Jehovah has given us so bountifully in so many ways. Can we not share with others so truly in need? It's only that I fear someday Job, you master, might... That I should be a bearer of such bad news. Yes, you... The cattle themselves happened to be plowing, and the she-asses were grazing at the side of them. Yes. When the Sabines came making a raid and taking them, and the attendants, they struck down with the edge of the sword. Oh. And I got to escape, only I by myself to tell you. Oh. Even the attendants struck down? Yes, my lord. Your she oh. My lord. And their attendants. Yes. Oh, the very fire of God fell from the heavens and went blazing among them and eating them up. Joe! And I got to escape, only I by myself to tell you. Joe, I feared this. The Chaldeans, my lord. The Chaldeans came, three bands of them, going dashing against the camels and taking them. And the attempted killed, my lord, all of them by the edge of the sword. And only I got escape by myself to tell you. No. Whatever he left, Joe, everything, gone. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, what news could you bear, my son? As you know, my Lord, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of the firstborn. Yes. And look, there came a great wind out of the wilderness, and it went striking the four corners of the house. And the young people, my children, the house fell upon them. They're all dead. Don't! Only I escaped to tell you, What is this thing that's happening to us? True God turned against us. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. Jehovah himself has given, and Jehovah himself has taken away. <laughs> Let the name of Jehovah continue to be blessed. Look, the principal elder of the city, sitting in the ashes. He's no elder now. <laughs> He's just an old man. <laughs> oh, filthy, stinking old man. Even his wife can't stand the smell of his breath. <laughs> Let's cheer him up. You sing him a song while I play the pipe. A fire has come out of the heavens, and a flame from the place of the Almighty, and the one who would like to be king has...
has been brought down to the very dust. So come, all you princes of the East, and you daughters from far off places. Almighty Job on his throne, sitting and ruling as monarch. King Job, hail him as king of the ash heaps. <laughs> the nameless one. Go back to your holes in the rocks on the slopes of the Torrent Valley. Grub for your food among the nettles and feast on the roots of broom trees. Job! Job! Why must you put up with these insults and ridicule? Have you not suffered enough? How long can you continue like this? Is there no end to your troubles? Are you yet holding fast your integrity? Curse God and die. <laughs> As one of the senseless women speech, you speak also. Shall we accept merely what is good from the true God and not accept what is bad? <laughs> indeed turned your face away from me. Yet how could I ever call down evil on your great name? Look, can that be Job sitting there in the ash heap? No. How could it be? He's nothing but skin and bones. Job has always been well favored. It is, Job. What? I can't believe how timely that we've met together by appointment to bring comfort to him. Oh, how my heart grieves oh, for how the mighty one has friends all and acquaintances now. Come, my brothers, we must bring comfort to him and rid him of this plague that's come upon him. For seven days and nights now you sat here by my side and not a word has been spoken. It's because we could see your suffering is, is too great for words. Have you indeed then come to comfort me, Eliphaz? And you too, Bildad, and so far. Will you surely prove to be faithful companions to me? All others have forsaken me. Oh, that the day I was born never existed. Also the night when somebody said it's a boy. Why did I not die at the moment I was born? Why did my mother even nurse me? For then I would have lain down undisturbed. I would be at rest alongside kings and the wise and wealthy men of the earth who have built for themselves places that are now in room. Job, I cannot eat for sighing, and my groans pour out like water out of a container. Listen to me, Job. Or would you become uh -huh. impatient? Speak. I have to say this anyway. Can't you remember the times you helped those who were down and out? When you encouraged them and lifted them up. But now calamity comes to you, and you're too stunned to face it. But Eliphaz... Why can't you have confidence and hope in your God now? Do you want to know why? Ask yourself. Have you ever seen the innocent and the upright ones destroyed? The way I see it, it's the wicked and the troublemakers who reap what they sow. It's easy for you to talk. Let me tell you an experience I had in the middle of the night. It was frightening. My flesh crawled and my hair stood. 
stood on end. A spirit passed before my face, but its form I couldn't recognize. Then out of the stillness, I heard a voice. Can anyone be more just and righteous than God? Face up to it, Job. If God doesn't even trust his angels, how could he have faith in a man who can be crushed more quickly than a moth? Don't resent this act of God, Job. Tell him what you've done wrong and accept his punishment. If my trouble could be weighed out in scales, then you'd see why I speak rashly. You are like the bull that has a full manger. You have no reason to complain. Oh, what hope do I have that I can regain strength and yet see a happy life? So why should I keep living? You men have proved a disappointment to me. Like coming to a stream of water, but instead of refreshment, a mouthful of dust. Job, Job, how long are you going to talk nonsense? Your words are just wind. Well, Dad. Do you think God will break his own rules or bend them for your sake? Do what's pure and upright, and he'll forgive and restore you. That's what history teaches us and all the aged men who are on our side. I know all that. But how can a man win his case against God? And how can anyone argue with him? Who can say to God, what are you doing? He's not a man like me that I should answer him, and I have no one to serve as a mediator. Do you think you're proved right by all this talk? You oh. claim you're pure in the eyes of God. Oh, that God would speak and tell you what he thinks. He knows what you've done then you'd know that he's punishing you far less than you deserve. Get rid of your sins and leave all your badness behind you. You think you have all the wisdom in the world, don't you? You think there would be no wisdom left if you died. <laughs> well, I know a few things myself. You know better than I am. Who doesn't know the things you've been saying? But here I am, a man who called to God and whom God answered. Yet I've become a laughing stock to my neighbors. Yes, I, a righteous man, am now the one they scoff at. You're misinterpreting the whole thing. How long will you Please, be? just keep silent. That would prove to be the truest wisdom on your part. Listen to me now, to my reason for what I think. Must you go on speaking for God when he never once said the things you put in his mouth? Oh, you're supposed to be wise, yet you give us all this foolish talk. Hear me out now. This is my case. I know I'm in the right. Who can argue with me over this or prove me wrong? Oh, God, that in shield you would conceal me, that you would set a time limit for me and remember me. Job, you filled your belly with the east oh, wind. What good do such words do? But why should I condemn you? Your own mouth does. Have you heard the secret counsel of God? Have you been called into his council chambers? On our side are men more aged than your father. I've heard all this before. What man in all the earth can be as pure and righteous as you claim to be? Why, God doesn't even trust the angels. Much less someone like you. A wicked man is always in Miserable trouble. comforters all of you are. Won't your foolish words ever cease? I could ridicule you too if you were in my place. But I wouldn't do that. 
I'd speak consolingly to you. I'd strengthen you with comforting words. Who are you trying to fool? But now my pain remains with me, no matter how I defend myself. Nor does it help if I refuse to speak. Speak some sense if you want us to answer. Oh, I am innocent. And my witness is there in heaven. My advocate is there. As for you, all of you, please, go away, for I do not find a wise man among you. Are we like unreasoning animals to you? Just because you're angry and tear your clothes, is that going to start an earthquake? Oh. You think it's God's anger that has caused your problems, but it's really your own. How long will you keep irritating me? Your troubles are just beginning. Your bright flame will are be put out. Are you trying to break me with your words? You walked into traps. Your strength is gone. Your skin is eaten by disease. Death will devour you. And all memory of your existence will perish. Young and old alike will look in horror at your fate. Yes, Job, that's oh. what happens to sinners, to those forget. Ten oh. times now you've declared I'm a sinner. But as for me... I know my Redeemer lives, and that coming after me, he will rise up over the dust. And yet in my flesh, I will see God. How dare you go on persecuting me as though I were proved guilty, when you yourselves are in danger of punishment for your attitude. I can answer that, Job. You tried to make me feel ashamed for calling you a sinner, but my spirit won't let me stop. Don't you realize that ever since man was placed here on earth, the joy of the godless is but for a moment? Oh. Though the apostate be as proud as the heavens, walking with his nose in the air, he'll be cast away like his own dung. Raging fire will devour his goods. The heavens will reveal his sins, and the earth will give testimony against him. This is what awaits the wicked man, for God prepares it for him. You all speak alike, don't you? Well, listen to me. How then do you explain that it's the wicked who live to a ripe old age? How can you deny this? You men have been around. <laughs> Ask anyone else with experience, and he'll tell you the truth. How can you comfort me when your whole argument is contrary to fact? Never mind all that, Job. Can any man be of value to God? Can a wise man make God wiser? Even if you were blameless, would God benefit by it? Stop this quarreling with God. Agree with him and you will have peace at last. Return to him and straighten out your affairs. Oh. Then you will be restored. Oh, if I could only present my case before God. Tell him all about my side of this argument. Would he overpower me with his greatness? No. He would listen with sympathy. I could reason with him and be acquitted. But I search in vain. Sometimes it seems as though God preserves the rich and restores them to life when anyone else would die. But though they are great now, in a moment they will be gone like all others, cut off like heads of grain. Who can prove me a liar and claim that I am wrong? Job, we'll answer you this once more, then we'll be silent. How can a mere man stand before God and claim to be righteous? Oh. Who in all the earth can boast that he's clean? Ah, God is so glorious that even the moon and the stars are less than nothing to him. How much less is man who is but a worm in his sight? Oh, what wonderful helpers you all are. 
and how you have encouraged me in my great need. How you have enlightened my stupidity. What wise things you have said. How did you ever think of all these brilliant comments? Oh, who do you think you're fooling? God? Hear now my final defense. As God lives, who has taken away my judgment and made my soul bitter, while I have breath from God, my lips will speak no unrighteousness and my tongue no evil. It is unthinkable that I should declare you men righteous. Until I die, I shall not take away my integrity from myself. I am not a sinner. My conscience is clear. And those who declare otherwise are my wicked enemies, evil men. Job, and you men, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, I am young and you are old, so I held back and didn't dare to tell you what I think, for those who are older are said to be wiser. But it isn't mere age that makes men wise. Rather, it's the spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty, which makes him intelligent. So do listen to me. I shall declare my knowledge, even I. I've waited all this time, listening very carefully to your arguments. But not one of them has convinced Job that he's a sinner, or proved that he is. Now I must speak to find relief. So let me give my answers. Job, listen, please, to what I have to say. Speak, Elihu. Do not hold back. You said over and over, I am clean, I am innocent, I have not sinned. God puts my feet in the stocks, you say, and watches every move I make. All right, here is my reply. In this you are not in the right. Why should you fight against God just because he does not give account to you of what he does? You wise ones, do you not know God does not sin, nor does he act wickedly or unjustly? Why then do you companions of Job pronounce God wicked? If God does not at once respond to the cries of the oppressed, Job, it is wrong to say he has not heard. But you companions of Job, it is even more false to say he will not act in justice at last. You need only wait for him. Look, God is all-powerful, more exalted than we can know. Who can begin to understand eternity? Indeed, who can understand the cloud layers, the crashings from his booth? In his hands he has covered over the lightning. Under his whole heavens he lets it loose, and his lightning is to the extremities of the earth. God thunders with his voice in a wonderful way, doing great things that we cannot know. No wonder men everywhere fear him. He is not impressed by the world's greatest men. Joe, brace yourself like an able-bodied man. Who is this whose ignorant words obscure my counsel in darkness? Let me question you, and you inform me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth and set its cornerstone in place? Or when I set the boundaries of the sea? Tell me if you know and understand. Have you ever once commanded the morning to appear or explore the sources of the sea? Or the treasuries of the snow? Can you hold back the stars? Or shout to the clouds and make it rain? Do you know how mountain goats give birth? Or what makes the zebra wild? Will the wild ox be your happy servant? And can you give the horse its strength, making him leap forward like a locust? Do 
you still want to argue with the Almighty? Let God's critic himself answer it. I am nothing. How could I ever find the answers? I lay my hand upon my mouth in silence. I have said too much already. Brace yourself, please, like an able-bodied man. Let me ask you a question and give me an answer. Really, will you invalidate my justice? Will you pronounce me wicked so you can say you are right? Or do you have an arm like that of the true God? And with a voice like his, can you make it thunder? Take a look now at the hippopotamus that I have made as well as you. Its bones are tubes of copper, and its ribs like wrought iron bars. It is not disturbed by raging rivers, not even if the Jordan should burst forth against it. Can you catch it off guard? Can you put a ring in its nose and lead it away? Or can you catch the crocodile with a fish hook? Can you put a noose around its tongue? Can you make a pet of it like a bird? Or give it to your little girls to play with? Arrows cannot make it flee, and sling stones are as ineffective as stubble. It is king over all majestic wild beasts. Oh, Jehovah, I know that you can do anything and that no one can stop you. I talked without understanding things that are too wonderful for me, things I knew nothing about. Now I say, I only heard about you before, but now my own eyes have seen you. That is why I make a retraction and repent in dust and ashes. Hello. Anger has grown hot against me, for you men have not spoken what is truthful concerning me, as has my servant Job. Now take seven young bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer a burnt offering for yourselves, and my servant Job will pray for you will accept his prayer on your behalf and won't destroy you as I should because of your sin for failing to speak what is truthful concerning me as has my servant Job. How can we say Job kept his integrity if he kept justifying himself and blaming God for his calamities? Well, Job never condemned God or pronounced him wicked like his three companions did. True, he kept asking why God would bring such calamity when Job knew he was innocent. But he didn't criticize God for it. You remember, Elihu said that none of them had proved Job was a sinner. But at the same time, he asked Job why he should fight against God just because he didn't tell him why this suffering was coming upon him. I remember that now. After all, how could Job know that he was being made the target of Satan's wicked challenge? That Jehovah was simply allowing it to show that Job really was a man who feared God and who always turned away from bad. But doesn't this just emphasize Job's integrity all the more? That even believing it was all from God, still he could not deny God or curse him. Why? What a responsibility that puts on us. That's right. We do know. So when we have trials and tests of integrity, no matter how prolonged or severe, 
it should move us to go forward in Jehovah's work regardless of anything God's adversary can bring against us that's the lesson we can learn from Job's trials and put our hope in the reward that Jehovah blessed Job with because of his faithfulness Job got everything back didn't he yes double all his flocks and herds and material possessions besides seven more sons and three daughters the most beautiful in all the land and he lived after that another 140 years and he had sons and grandsons four generations isn't that the way it's been with the society all these years yes it is the brothers and the society have been accused of all sorts of bad things but the remnant today has learned the lesson from Job and is not sidetracked into defending its position rather than indulging in self-justification the organization has always sought to put Jehovah's work to the fore and to magnify his great name even as Elihu declared and just look at the blessing Jehovah has poured out. The marvelous increase we see today. Not just in numbers, but in spiritual growth as well. It's all proof that Jehovah has not turned away from his faithful remnant. They've been hated by the world, and Satan has fought desperately to turn them aside. But they are beloved of Jehovah for their integrity-keeping works. And we know he'll never let them down.